Power Business. Power Business with Kaya Sitole on Power 98.7. Welcome back to the Tuesday evening edition of Power Business Accountability. Not a word that is popular in South Africa because you see far too many people getting away with murder in so many ways. So you can imagine how surprising it was when we saw from the JSE Stock Exchange News Service last week that they issued two notices explaining to us how two directors had done so wrongly in one company that they deserve to be publicly censored and then be banned for five years from being directors of other listed companies. It is indeed something that we hardly ever see and to talk us through that we joined on the line by the chief executive officer of the institute of directors pami natasan pami i must confess when i got those two notices i was like wait what's going on what role do i live in accountability in south africa heban uh evening kaya it's great to be with you again absolutely i had the same thought um and and you know apart from sort of shock and surprise it's actually um happiness and pride that this is happening. I mean, we've been saying for so long that we need to see more accountability for directors. It's it's really great to have seen this public censure. Now, talk us through the brief history of what happened for the JC to have resulted in this type of uh, action in relation to IO. Well, put simply, the the JSC would have followed the um, processes and requirements and come up with the conclusion that they did. And in in their findings, in in the report that they sent out, um, and I quote, they say that these candidates who were directors previously on AO admitted to having little or no knowledge of corporate governance issues, no lo- knowledge of or about the rules and regulations of financial reporting procedures of the JSE. And they also conceded to be inexperienced directors and therefore neglected their duty placed on them. And I mean, this relates directly to what we've been saying for so many years, that directorship is a really serious a role and responsibility and has legal duties and also legal consequences and other consequences if um, those duties are not fulfilled. And it's really great to see this one such consequence here being this, um, you know, disqualification from being able to hold office as a director of a listed company for five years. An audit committee is a remarkably important oversight body of a management and from what we see in this report, those that are supposed to be providing oversight had absolutely no capacity to even oversee anything. One of the issues that was raised when IO itself was fined, I think it was six and a half million rand in relation to just how poor their financial statements had been. It then turned out that they say that even internally they didn't have the right resources. So internally the resources were there and on the oversight side the resources were not there. How was this allowed to happen? Yeah, it's actually quite scary that things like this are happening, and especially on on listed companies where you'll expect them to have um, the resources in place within the organization and also then the oversight skills on the board and on these audit committees. Um, I think, look, the the rules are quite clear, and and people, you know, if people choose to take chances and accept these positions when they don't have the skill, they do so at their own own risk. Um, You know, these directors now admitting that they didn't have the knowledge, etc. Well, I mean, they should have thought about that when they accepted the position to serve on the board and audit committee of a listed entity. It's an extremely serious uh, position to be in. You need to understand what your duties are and you need to be sure that you have the skills to be able to discharge them effectively. Regrettably, in spite of events like this happening, it still actually isn't a rule. It still isn't a law that anyone who accepts a directorship needs to be able to prove that they have the capacity and the skills that they need in order to be able to perform that function. It's still a matter of, well, I say I have it. And now it turns out that these are the two individuals who probably exhibited the most extreme form of just not being fit for purpose. Is this something that the IOD wishes could be done different in order to ensure that those that sign financial statements and say, I know what I'm doing, actually have a working knowledge of what they're doing? Absolutely, Kaya. And there's so many things that get come to mind. I mean, one, our legislation needs to change. Our companies act as silent on what is required to serve as a director. At the moment, almost anyone can serve as a director unless they're disqualified. Um, and there's very few uh, you know, instances of them being disqualified. There's no requirements uh, of what skills, knowledge, experience is necessary to serve as a director. Um, in our law, nor in uh, regulation, um, and nor are shareholders, I feel, really applying their minds to what is necessary before they vote for these directors. You know, interestingly enough, we as the IOD will often get asked when you see a director out there transgressing, um, we'll get asked, well, what have you done about it or what are you doing about it? And as a voluntary professional body, we can don't only do so much because we can hold our members to account. Coincidentally, oftentimes, these individuals that are 
in on the front pages of the newspapers aren't members of the Institute of Directors in the first place, which which is concerning. I mean, we have a director competency framework and we have director designations, which we then vet candidates against before we give them that designation. And if more directors, I feel, are being appointed who are vetted against our director competency framework, at least then there's some assurance that they have a level of skill and experience to be able to fulfill this role. Yeah, very, very important considerations there. On the same front, we're also seeing that at Tongat, at least the law enforcement agencies have stepped in and said that these directors have got a case to answer. Surely this is essentially, I don't know, a wave of accountability finally kicking in. Hopefully so. Um, you know, we're seeing more and more talk in, in our SOEs after the Zondo reports have been published. And now I'm seeing more and more talk in the private sector with this JSC Center and now um, what's happening at Tongat. And hopefully the wheels are turning and we're going to see um, more consequences because, you know, unless we start seeing that, we're just going to see the behavior continue, unfortunately. Yeah, and it's definitely something that needs to be addressed because for as long as there is that gap between people's competence and expertise versus what the demands of chairing or even being on the board of the listed company are, we are actually running the risk that many more companies may find themselves on the wrong side when, unfortunately, the losses could amount to the millions and people may lose jobs. Absolutely, and I think, um, you know, as much as things like the consequence we see now are important, even more important, I feel, and I, and I raised this before, is, is how we're appointing people. You know, Kaya, I often see at AGMs, uh, you know, when you see reports about AGMs or even the ones I've attended, there's so much debate and discussion and questions on so many of the resolutions being tabled. But how often do you see debate, discussion and questions on the resolution to do with the appointment of directors? I often see that that resolution just gets passed without much um, consideration, and I think that's that's a key point that we need to also pay attention to. Do we wait for activist shareholders to be the ones that ask difficult questions about? Wait, hold on, why that person? How does this person balance the pre-existing skill set on the board? Is that the missing conversation at many AGMs? Possibly, I think every shareholder should be asking that question. You know, one of the most important rights that a shareholder has is to appoint directors who they have trust in to run this organisation um, properly and to help it survive and thrive. And, and and therefore, every shareholder should be applying their mind to who they're voting for. Yeah, definitely some interesting developments there. Thank you very much, Parmi Natasan, the Chief Executive Officer of the Institute of Directors. Indeed, the JSE has come out and said two of the directors that sat on the Audit Committee of IO Technologies were quite simply unfit for purpose. They've been banned from serving on the boards of a listed company for the next five years simply because they do not repossess the skills necessary in order to really fulfill that responsibility. The problem, of course, is that there are so many more within JSE listed companies who quite simply have no idea what they're doing. 7 p.m. Time for Power News. You've been listening to a Power 98.7 podcast. For more podcasts, visit power987.co.za or subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.